Hi, I'm Chad with Move For A Guitar. This lesson is from our series, How to Read Music For A Guitar. In this lesson, I'm going to explain the circle of fifths. First off, if you like all the diagrams for this series, including the diagrams for this lesson, you can download our free e-guide, How to Read Music For A Guitar. But I am working on it right now as I'm filming this lesson, so it might not be available as you're watching this lesson. If it is available, a link will pop up on the screen that will allow you to download it. And like I said, it's free, so there's no reason not to download it when it is available. This is part 17 from our series, How to Read Music for a Guitar. If you'd like to go back and start at the beginning, you can click the link on the screen. So in the last lesson, we talked about the major scale and major scale keys and how key signatures are based on major scale keys. I explained that key signatures aren't just random groupings of sharps or flats, that they're specifically based on major scale keys. So the sharps or flats that are shown in the key signature are because a major scale key has those sharps or flats in it. You couldn't just have a random grouping of sharps or flats in your key signature. It's totally based on the major scale. And so for example, what's right here is the key signature for A major. And the reason it's showing three sharps is because in the key of A major, the A major scale has three sharps in it. It has a C sharp, an F sharp, and a G sharp, which are all represented right here. And here are all the possibilities for key signatures. Each one specifically relates to a major scale. For example, this one right here is relating to the G major scale. So this would be in the key of G. And the reason it has one sharp on the F line is because the G major scale has one sharp, which is F. The G major scale is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, back to G. This one right here is the D major scale. It's representing the key of D because in the key of D, the D major scale has two sharps, which are F sharp and C sharp. The D major scale is D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, back to D. And in this lesson, I'm going to explain how to learn what each of these key signatures represent. For example, here are what each of these key signatures represent. That can seem really daunting if you just look at that as a beginner. So I'm going to explain how to figure that out and memorize it. Also, I'm going to explain how you can take any major scale and quickly figure out what sharps or flats are in that major scale because a major scale is really easy to build as far as letter names go. You just start on any letter and follow the musical alphabet. And the musical alphabet is the same as the regular alphabet except it starts back over at A after G. So if I started on G and I built a G major scale, it's really easy. I just go G, start back over at A, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then I'm back at G. The only hard part is figuring out which of those notes, if any, have a sharp or a flat on them. And you can do that by looking at your fretboard. If you have the notes on your fretboard memorized, you could use the formula that I talked about with the major scale, which is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, and just see where you land on your fretboard and see if that's a sharp or a flat. And I said that it has to go in alphabetical order, so that determines whether it's called a sharp or a flat. But there's another way to do this as well, and that's using something called the circle of fists. And the circle of fists is just a visual tool to help you understand the relationships of notes in music. And there's multiple uses for the circle of fists, but what we're going to use it for now, and one of its main features, is the ability to use it as a visual tool for memorizing all the keys, all the major scale keys, and which one have sharps and which one have flats, and how many sharps and flats are in each of those keys. And not only does that help you when looking at a key signature, it would also help you when building a major scale to be able to quickly know which of the letters have sharps or flats on them. So the first thing we're going to fill in are these numbers in here, and these represent the sharps. So everything that happens on this side is called the sharp side, which I'll talk about more as we're going through this. So this first one up here at 12 o'clock is zero, representing that whatever key is right here has zero sharps or flats. And then we go along clockwise and add a sharp each time. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So by the time we're down here, whatever key is right there has six sharps in it. And the first thing we need to do is take the letters F, C, G, D, A, E, B and memorize those. And you can use a mnemonic device that's pretty common. There are lots of other ones you can use, but one of the most common ones is Father Charles goes down and ends battles. So you're just taking the letter and adding a word to each one of them just so it makes it easy to memorize. But like I said, there's lots of different mnemonic devices you can use. 
I've heard other ones that are probably even better, but since this is the most common one, I just went with this. And I'll explain why these letters are important as we're going through, but the thing you wanna memorize first and always know is that the key of C is the one key with zero sharps or zero flats. So just always remember that. If you build a C major scale, it has no sharps or flats. It's all the natural notes on your fretboard. Now we have the key of C right here telling us that there's no sharps or flats in it. We're gonna fill all the other letters right around it. So we're gonna take F and put it right before it, right here. We're gonna take G and put it right in front of it, right there. And then we're just gonna fill the rest in. So now we've just taken D, A, E, and B and put them in order through here. So this is telling us right away that the key of C has zero sharps and flats, G has one sharp, D has two sharps, A has three, E has four, B has five, and we'll worry about F coming up in this lesson. We're just going this way for now on this side, which I mentioned was the sharp side. These are the keys that have sharps in them. So these are called sharp keys. So you can see if we started right here, we'd have that Father Charles goes down and ends battles. And you just have to remember that the key of C is at 12 o'clock with zero sharps and flats. To use this one here and not put the F there, the F goes counterclockwise to it. And this sharp side is called the circle of fists. I know this whole thing is called the circle of fists, but you'll find other names for it. And I like to call the sharp side the circle of fists and the flat side something else, which I'll talk about coming up. And the reason it's called the circle of fists is because every one of these letters is moving in fists, meaning that if you started on F, went to C, that's a fifth away. From C to G is a fifth away, all the way to B. So if you counted F, G, A, B, C, Count that on your hand, that's five. If you counted C, D, E, F, G, that's five. G, A, B, C, D, that's five. They're all fists away from each other. So that's why it's called the circle of fists. So now we need to take another group of letters to fill out the other side. And this other side is called the flat side because these are the keys with flats in them. And those letters are B, E, A, D, G, C, F. And you can use another mnemonic device which just kind of reverses what was said before, which is battles in and down goes Charles' father. And again, there's other ones that I've heard. You can find other ones that are really easy to find online, but this is the most common one. So I'm just sticking with this for now, but you can come up with whatever you want. Or some people just memorize that the first four letters spell bead and then just memorize GCF after it. It's up to you, whatever works for you. And so like I said, this side is called the flat side because these are the keys with the flats in them. And this side is referred to a lot of times as the cycle of force, which I'll explain in just a minute, but it's just the same as why the other side was called the circle of fists. I, you can probably figure out why it's called the cycle of force. So now we're gonna fill in these numbers here, which are all gonna be flats instead of sharps this time, and we're just gonna go from one to six on this side. And I know I had a six sharp here earlier, but I'll explain how that works coming up in this lesson. So now we know that already the key of F has one flat on it. It's a flat key, it's not a sharp key. That's why it's on the counterclockwise side of the C, which is zero. And then the next one, whatever's here, has two flats, three flats, four flats, and so on. And I'm sure you can already figure out that we're just gonna take these letters and fill them in here, which would be like this, which means that B has two flats, E has three, A four, D five, and C six. But it's not B, E, A, D, C. As you can see, those are already on this side. You have to turn all of them except F into flats. So it's actually B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. So just remember that everything on the flat side has a flat in the name except F. So the key of B flat has two flats, the key of E flat has three flats, the key of A has four flats and so on. And as you can see, the reason this is called the cycle of force is because from F to B flat is four, from B flat to E flat is four, all the way to G flat. So if you count on your hand F, G, A, B, that's four. Then if you go to B to E, B, C, D, E, that's four and so on. That's why it's called the cycle of force. Others don't call it the cycle of force. They just say you're going in fifth reverse. So from B to F is a fifth, from E to B is a fifth, etc. But I think that's a little confusing. I like to call it the cycle of force and you'll run into this term often, especially if you get into jazz. So I think it's important to see this as moving in force. So now we're actually missing some flats and some sharps because we need each one of them, each side to have seven because in key signatures, you're gonna have a key signature that goes up all the way 
way to seven sharps and you're going to have a key signature that goes up all the way to seven flats so first if we add in up to the seven sharps you can see we only have five sharps right now which is b what you do is just start back over with f and c and add those in after b like this but you put sharps on them this time so f and c are the only ones once you get down to the bottom of the circle of fists that have sharps on them everything else in the sharp side doesn't have a sharp on it so g d a e b don't have sharps and then f and c after the b have sharps not these f and c's and again that's just moving in fifth so from b to f sharp is a fifth from f sharp to c sharp is a fifth if you were to look on your fretboard those are a fifth away and so that means that f sharp has six sharps and c sharp has seven sharps so that's the rest of the sharp key signatures and then we just have one more left on the flat side because we're up to six right now we need to get to seven so we'd add in a c flat on the flat side that would have seven flats and you can see when we take the battles in and down goes charles father we're actually leaving off the f when we're going this way because f is already in there at the top so you can see we ended on C right there. And you just don't have to worry about F for now. I'm gonna explain why it's even written in here because it is really important, but not for going through the circle of fists this way because it's already up here at the top. So that can be a little confusing. You just have to be aware of it. You're ending on C when you write the battles end and down goes Charles. You just leave the F off because it was already put up here at the top. And another thing you may be asking is why is this a C flat? Because there's not even a C flat on your fretboard. A C flat and a B are in harmonic equivalents, meaning they have different names, but they're the exact same pitch, which I've mentioned before. And there's times in music where you have to write something like C flat, even though that's not really on your fretboard. It's just a B because between B and C are just a half step. So I don't want to get in that too much. Just know that the C down here is a flat, C flat. The one at the very top with no sharps or flats is just a natural C. And like I said, everything on the flat side has a flat next to it except the F. And then everything on the sharp side doesn't have a sharp next to it except the F sharp and C. So the, just some rules that you have to be aware of. So now we have one part of the circle of fists down, which is which keys have how many sharps or flats in them. And that's just one part of it. The other part is knowing which sharps and flats are actually in this key. So obviously C has nothing, but when you get to G, how would you know what note in G is the sharp or what two notes in D are the sharp? Like I said, it's just through the musical alphabet, easy to figure out. For example, if you started on here and built a major scale that it's D, E, F, G, A, B, C, back to D, but how would you know which of those letters get a sharp, which two of them? And that again goes back to this. So on the sharp side, it's the F, C, G, D, A, E, B, which is Father Charles goes down and ends battles. Start on the C again, because that's the one with no sharps or flats. We'll worry about F later. C obviously has zero. G has one. And the one starts over in this grouping of letters. So the one sharp in G is F. Then you go down to D. D has two sharps. The two sharps in D are F and C. Go down to A, it has three sharps. The three sharps in A are F, C, and G, and so on. You go all the way through this, all the way to where you get to C sharp on the sharp side, and it has all of these letters as sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. Then on the other side, it's the same thing. C is zero, so C has nothing. Then you go to F. Now we use these letters. The one flat in F is B. Then you go down to B flat. The two flats in B flat are B and E. Then E flat, the three flats are B, E, and A, all the way till you get to C flat, which has all of them, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So you can see that as you're adding sharps or flats, so if I go on the sharp side, when I go from G, which has the F in it, when I, I go to D after that, it keeps the F and then adds the C. When I go to A, it keeps the F and the C and adds the G. So you just have to be aware that as you're going through, you always keep the one that you added previously. And then on the flat side, that's why the F is even here because when you get to C flat, it has B, E, A, D, G, C, and F in it. Those are all the seven flats in the key of C flat. So for a look at the key signatures again, you'd quickly know that C is the one with zero because C always has natural notes, only natural notes, no sharps or flats. Then if you looked at the circle of fists, you could see the next one is G. So if we went back and looked at it, you could see the next one is G and then it has one sharp 
and that one sharp is an F sharp. So this is G, this sharp is on the F line, that's an F sharp. And the reason it's G is because G is five away from C, so that's the order of these. So if you were to look at this, you'd easily be able to look back at your circle of fifths chart and fill this out and see which is which. For example, I could just pick any random one. I could pick this on the flat side. There's four flats showing. So all I'd have to do is look at my circle of fifths, go to the flat side, four flats. Automatically, I know that's in the key of A flat. And if I go through here, automatically, I know that those flats are B, E, A, and D. So now I know this is A flat and those flats right here are B, E, A, and D, which I could check and make sure that that's where they're landing on those lines or in those spaces. And again, this isn't something you can just memorize really quickly. You kind of have to go back and forth. You memorize it over time. Don't just think that the circle fits is something you memorize overnight and then you know all this information. It's just another tool that helps visualize all this and we'll dive deeper into all this as we're going through in the next lesson. I'm going to give you even more tricks with understanding key signatures so it'll really help you out. So that's an explanation of the circle of fists. Go ahead and move on to the next lesson where I'm going to talk about the rules of the key signatures and be sure to download the e-guide. All the diagrams are in there and be sure to subscribe because we had at least one new lesson every day.